Here's another important note about naming alkenes. Sometimes they can simultaneously be alcohols, in which case we refer to them as enols. And the ranking, as you can see in this molecule, favors the location of the OH group in the alcohol. So the alcohol group outranks the double bond, so this chain is numbered backwards. And notice uh, the name reflects that the 2 is where the alcohol group is, and that puts the carbon-carbon double bond starting at carbon number 4. So that becomes 4-pentene-2-O, numbers to tell us where both of those important features are located. This next slide shows a couple more important alkyl groups that have double bonds. We've seen things like methyl, ethyl, tertiary butyl uh, back in chapters 2 and 3 and 4. And, and now we see this ethenyl group that has a carbon-carbon double bond. If that were hanging off of a ring, for example, that might be called ethenyl, but it's much more commonly referred to as vinyl. That's a very old and traditional name for this. A lot of vinyl plastics you might be familiar with are made starting with compounds that have this structural feature. If you add another CH2 group, that vinyl becomes allyl, also more formally known as propenyl. So these molecules at the bottom can be named based on uh, using these substituent names. Vinyl chloride is more, I guess, officially named as chloroethene, and this allyl alcohol is a uh, a uh, common name for what would be 2-propene-1-O. And remember, we start numbering where the OH group is uh, in preference to where the double bond is. If you build a molecular model of an alkene, you do find that you get these 120-degree bond angles around the carbons. All these atoms will be in the same plane. And um, as it mentions there, a double bond is shorter than a single bond. It's stronger than a single bond, although it's not twice as strong. But because of that extra bonding, that means there's not any conformational changes we can talk about here. These atoms uh, surrounding this double bond are pretty much stuck in place. These next slides talk about the hybridization in alkenes, similar to what was done for alkanes back in Chapter 2. Uh, we're not going to get much into this. I included these slides just to point you in the right direction in case you are taking some standardized tests that require you to know something about hybridization. With alkanes, with all the single bonds, it was sp3. It was mixing an s orbital with all three p orbitals uh, for carbon to come up with those four tetrahedral orbitals. Uh, you just mix one of the S's and two of the P orbitals when you're talking about alkenes, and these sp2 orbitals that have already been mixed here at the bottom, that gives us three equivalent orbitals, and they would naturally be coplanar and 120 degrees apart. It's the overlap of carbons with the single electron in this unhybridized P orbital. That's where that second bond, the double bond, comes from. And here's all of that kind of superimposed on one structure. With the double bond, we have, as it shows here, what's a sideways overlap of these unhybridized p orbitals. Uh, orbitals usually overlap end to end. But this sideways overlap means that these orbitals are overlapping in two areas, both lobes down here on the bottom left. Uh, that's not as strong as an interaction as the head-to-head -head bonding of the sp2 orbitals but it is the source of that extra bond that we draw, that extra line to indicate a double bond. And these head-to-head -head orbital overlaps are referred to as sigma bonds. That's a small case sigma down here in the purple region. And the pi bonds here, that's the term used to re refer to overlap when it is sideways, not end-to-end. -end. And here's a few more uh, related comments about that kind of... Um, molecular explanation of bonding with molecular orbitals.